yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for showing up. I am so grateful. Oh, brother confessors. <laughs> How are you for you guys showing up here today? I was actually nervous making this old video and doing all this old thing. Like everything is a struggle now. I'm trying to get my head, my head back to Tommy, you know, and um, it's been a real challenge. So um, I've been having a lot of people send me messages like, you know, how, what I went through, um, how I um, was able to cope and everything. And um, I've done a full series, a full series of the juicy and sour details of my process, you know. Um, it's been tough, but at the same time, we've been very, very positive about the things that have happened. And um, we are grateful to God that we could, we could be sharing our, our story to motivate and inspire people. And just know that, you know, it's, it's going to happen for you as well. And um, you'll be happy. <laughs> You know, you'll be very happy about what God is about to do for you. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to begin by um, starting with Nadine Ibrahim. <laughs> How are you? Oh God, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. My you know. I'm so nervous. I'm just like M M M and 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 um yeah so uh I I know it is tough, you know, coming out and saying things like this because some some part of our society will frown at us coming out and saying that we've gone through um things like this. And it's difficult for people to find help yeah. in this kind of um with this kind of situations and circumstance. So um, I'm really glad that you agreed to do this. I'm really, 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 really glad. So I'm glad that you're doing it because a lot of people feel insecure about talking about it, especially those that don't have babies yet. So it's seen, it's seen as a taboo. Maybe if you speak about it, you're jinxing yourself. Or, you know, with the way our culture is, you're not supposed to speak about certain things. So I'm glad you're doing it. So I'm really happy that you're doing it. Um, but unfortunately for me, I was misdiagnosed as a miscarriage, and I was actually having an ectopic pregnancy. So for those that don't know what an ectopic pregnancy is, when your baby's growing out of your womb, so they don't really see it, and they just they, they say it's a pregnancy in unknown location. So what had happened was because I was treated for a miscarriage, it ended up rupturing in my fallopian tube. Wow. So I then had to surgery. I know. <laughs> it's so crazy. Wow. So it's one of those things where first you think okay, you're having a miscarriage and then it gets like zero to a hundred and before you do it with surgery and you're just thinking all these things like for me it was kind of like crazy because I didn't even know these things could happen with pregnancy. I was kind of naive. You get hmm. judgment. So let, let's answer this lady's question. And I don't know who this. Did you have any Pre uh, any problem conceiving after losing one of your tubes? So it's really strange. So with when I when I lost because it was the first pregnancy I lost, so I don't I only have one tube. So women usually have two fallopian tubes, and they told me that I was gonna have I was it was gonna be a lot more difficult for me to conceive after. But then, funnily enough. Because conceiving wasn't my problem. I was getting pregnant. It was just like keeping it or it's trying to get to my womb. That was the problem. So I don't know. I would. Say, I, I can't say for sure if like having one tube maybe resulted in the other two losses or not. But I think, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. It definitely does have, it definitely does decrease your chances of um, conceiving. People tell me, how did you survive? And I'm like... How did you survive, mm, you know? Mm, mm. Okay, so hi, my name is Simi. Hold on. I have 20 minutes. Okay. Mm. Hi, my name is Mel. I'll try and say everything in my 20 minutes. Okay. Um, um, so, what do I do? <laughs> Entrepreneur. Excuse me. What do, what do they call us? 
Essa é a primeira série. Então, setembro da semana, eu estou pregando de quem não está ok. Let's see. Let me try make it through the first trimester. That was it. Like my goal was make it through the first trimester because we lost the first one at 13 weeks. They're about. So I was like, okay. Made it through the first trimester. I was like, awesome, very good. My mom is like, oh, you should have this baby outside of Nigeria. I was like, please, I don't have money for all those kind of things. That it's lofty dreams, lofty dreams. <laughs> She said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I told my husband. He was like, okay. So I already scheduled. A trip to go to the US in November, mm. and um, so we had, we went, and I was like, okay, let me the opportunity to find a doctor. I saw a doctor and everything, so we we're on schedule. I was supposed to have my baby in, I was supposed to have baby May 25. I got into the US April 1, so I was there, and um, then the first first week, first weekend in May, yes, the first weekend in May. I um I just said having it was a Sunday apparently it didn't surprise me sure for me I had absolutely no clue I was clueless but oh oh oh, oh wait from... your your pregnancy has gone that full 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 blown yes I was at thirty six weeks at this point I was at thirty six weeks at this point so that, that was a Sunday yeah and way back I was still driving I was doing everything like I said there was nothing wrong with me. I was just having like cramps and pain. I was like, and I've been having Braxton Hicks, so I just assumed that it was Braxton Hicks contractions. So I was like, okay, let me get off my feet. I was with a friend. I was like, I think we should go at the mall. I was like, I think we should go back home. Like, I need to get off my feet. And like the way I'm having these cramps, like let me, let me just get off my feet. Let me not be lying down. So we had the um, so they did the baby shower. And I remember when the lady was praying, she was praying against a still breath. And I don't know, like, something just dropped in my heart. And I was like, still bad. But I just brushed it off. They had shower. I, I remember talking to my mom. I was like, oh, I'm having contractions, but I think it's Braxton Hicks. And, you know, by the time, after the day's event, I took a shower and went to sleep. I was like, okay. So the next day, I found, like, three chilled Capri Sons. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was feeling cold. By the evening, I was like... I'm not sure I felt my baby kicking as much. Like, I'm not sure, you know? So I was a bit apprehensive when I was going to sleep. And then I was like, okay, I took a shower. I just said, I put blood of Jesus over myself and my baby. I said, let me go. But at 2 a.m., I woke up. And, you know, my best friend is an OBGYN. So I told her, I was like, how do I, like, how do I check, like, what, now that I'm at 36, what's the ideal, like, how many kicks should I feel within one time? She was like, okay, within two hours, like, because your the space has gotten um, tight, but the baby's bigger, that maybe you'll get, like, 10 to 15 kicks or so. I was like, okay. So I was up from 2 to 4 a.m., not one kick. I was like, eh? And I've gone to ANC, and I think... I think that the ASA I went to was very helpful because it talked about what to monitor, what to look for, all those things. So they actually briefed us on, like, you know, knowing your body and all that stuff. So I was like, I was like, there's something off. I was like, okay, I think I need to go to the emergency room. She was like, whatever they're going to do in the emergency room is what they're going to do for you at the doctor's appointment. What time does the doctor open? I was like, my doctor opens at 8 a.m. said, get the earliest appointment. I called them. This was now Tuesday. So it was Sunday we had the baby shower. Monday evening, around 10 was when I was like, there's something off. So this was Tuesday morning now. And I call, 8 a.m. I called doctor, doctor's office there like, 8.15 is the earliest appointment. I was like, I will be there. So I went there. They used the, um, I think it's called a doctor. But the fetal heart monitor shot, they did, they did that. The one that the, the handy, like the handy ultrasound machine, they did that. Then they put the belt over my tummy, they did that. Then the doctor was like, let's do an ultrasound. And so when they did the ultrasound, the technician was like, that she needs to step out for a moment. And she called in my doctor. And then my doctor was like, Cindy, I'm so sorry. I was like, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I think I just went into crisis mode, like, Okay, so what's the next thing to do? Because I had a background in health, so I knew that having a dead baby in my womb was not a good thing at all. So I was like, 
what is the next one? She was like, you know, you still need to take some time. I was like, see, my husband is not even here. The funny thing was, I spoke to my parents on Monday, and they were like, oh, when's your due date? When should we buy our tickets, blah, blah, blah. And so they just bought their tickets that Monday. And we're still saying, oh, okay, come in two weeks' time and all that stuff. So I was like, see, my husband is not yet here. I'm the one that is here. My brothers were in school six hours away from me. So there was just a whole bunch of stuff. I was like, um, okay. So the doctor was like, no. I was like, what? Well, let me know what next I'm supposed to do. She was like, okay. That they will check and see when there is space in the hospital. And they're like, okay, this is, I can come in that afternoon. And all. in this whole time, I didn't, I didn't talk to my parents. I didn't talk to them, but I was just said in my husband message, I was like, so this is what they said. He was like, okay, let's continue praying that there's nothing God cannot do and all that. But, and I think, I think that even as much faith as we had, I think we also looked at like my, um, my situation in the sense that, okay, if we have lost the baby, we don't need to lose the mother too. 